in the last video we created this project and in this video we are going to configure it so as usual let's go and follow the getting started book uh, let's go to the next topic the first thing that we are going to do is to scan the components of spring lemon and for that we need to provide this parameter in our spring boot application class let's go and do that then going ahead let's set up the application properties in which we need to provide properties for the database and some other properties so let's go ahead and do that one by one for the database configuration let's copy this code and paste it here and let me change the db name and the username and the password as it is there in my pc if you don't have mysql you can install mysql and then you can create a database and give the name of the database here and then give the username and the password here and if you want to skip uh, installing mysql and just want to go ahead with the demo with an in-memory database instead of these lines you can just give hsql db and in the pom.xml instead of mysql you could have put hsql db and for more details you can refer to the getting started book here it is talking about it okay so proceeding forward dev tools we have selected dev tools because our application is only a backend it's not attached to a browser so let's disable the library load of browser so let's put this also there in our application properties and then we need to specify an application url and by default that is localhost colon 9000 and in our case that will be the case so we don't need to specify it but if your url is going to be different you need to specify this line as well in the application dot properties and then coming to recaptcha we need to specify the site key and the secret key of google recaptcha so let's copy this and paste it here I have got a couple of keys which I am going to paste here and I am going to do that after finishing this video. So let's go ahead with uh, the application to property settings. Then we have got, we, we are going to use the remember me feature and it expects a secret key to encrypt the token. And so let's give something and then we need to provide the data about the first administrator that is going to be created in the database when the application runs first. Uh, when an application is installed at a site, it's helpful to have the database initialized with an admin user first because then you can log in as that admin user and do some admin operations. So Spring Lemon ex expects these two properties to be given. So let's go and give those and then spring lemon comes with a mail sender and for that for configuring that you might need to give some properties for example for configuring gmail the property will be needed and if you are going to skip giving these properties as we are going to do mails will not be sent but they will be written to our console so let's skip those and Spring Lemon comes with many more flags. If you read the book Spring Framework REST API Development Complete Blueprint, you will come to know about all the flags that Spring Lemon provides. And so this is just to make you aware, but we are not going to do anything here. And uh, let's go to the next topic. You know that Spring Lemon has a user module which we are going to inherit from it. And uh, that user module uses some validation messages and those are to be put in a validation messages.properties file and uh, these are the messages which are required so let's copy this and put it there uh, 
Okay. Now the next thing is that not only the validation messages, but some other messages are also used by Spring Lemon, and those are to be put in messages dot properties. And let's go ahead and do that. Okay. After doing that, let's go to the next topic. Spring Lemon comes with a few base classes which we will need to extend and configure. And let's go ahead and do that. And the first one here is to create a security configuration class by extending from Lemon Security Config. Let's create a My Security Config class. Because it extends from Lemon Security Config, most of the default configurations which are needed for while developing a REST API will be inherited. But if you want to customize those, or if you want to add your own authentication or authorization methods, you can do that here. And the next thing is to create a user entity. Spring Lemon comes with an abstract user entity, which we need to extend at the minimum like this. See here the abstract user takes two parameters. One is the uh, concrete user class, which is the user itself, and the other one is the primary key type. So uh, we are telling here that our user will have the primary key as long. The next thing will be to inherit the lemon controller. Let's do that. Again, this lemon controller takes two parameters. One is the concrete user class and the other one is the primary key of the user class. And here we are providing the request mapping annotation and then we are providing slash API slash core. That means our API, our core API that we are going to inherit from the lemon controller is going to be available at slash API slash core. And then we need to also inherit a service class from lemon service. And let's do that. And here at the minimum, the service class, the concrete service class that we have provided should override a new user method, which should return a new concrete user that is used by the methods of our lemon service class next thing would be to extend uh, the abstract user repository and create a user repository let's do that i am creating all the classes and interfaces in a single package but you may like to have different packages so this is this will be an interface name user a repository that's all the configuration and customization needed for our demo application to work so if we have done everything correctly we can now try running the application and see how it works so our application is running properly and because we have used dev tools and we are running the application in debug mode this silent exit exception is thrown but it's nothing to worry just resume and if we go to our spring perspective we see that things are running properly so in this video we did all the configuration and customization stuff and in the next video we are going to go ahead and customize the user entity